You are listening to episode five of the Mom on Purpose podcast. Today, we're going to be talking with Emily Jensen about embracing life as a mom of young children. Welcome to Mom on Purpose podcast. If this is your first time listening, thanks for coming. The Mom on Purpose podcast is produced every week. Come back often and please subscribe in iTunes. All links and materials referenced are in the show notes, which you'll find at momonpurpose.com. Every episode of Mom on Purpose will include a quick mom verse. Today's verse is Genesis 33, 5. It comes from when Esau and Jacob met one another after years of not seeing each other. Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children, and he said, Who are these with you? Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. And what I wanted to encourage you with today is that this is a way that we can choose to talk about and to see our children. It's very common in our culture to talk about children as a terrible burden, as exhausting, as stressful, as what a mess, what a little monster she is. And I want to encourage you to be different in the way you speak about your children. Christian women should stand out because we should see our children as blessings. We should have this sort of attitude that says, these are the children whom God has graciously given me, and I want to be His servant. I want to honor Him with the stewardship of these children, and I want to see them as gifts from Him. And you can do that, and you can stand out, and you can start to influence the way your circle of friends talks about children. Now let's jump right in to our conversation with Emily Jensen. All right. Hi, Emily. Hi. (laughs) I am so excited to talk with you this morning. Um, I feel like you're really going to um, deliver some things that are of value to our listeners. and But before we get going, I just wanted for you to share a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I've been really looking forward to chatting with you, and I know that your your blog and your writing has been a valuable resource to me. So this is so fun. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, yep, I've been married to my husband for about six years, almost seven, I guess. Uh, we live in central Iowa and we have four children, all boys. Mm-hmm. Um, they are ages three and a half and my twins are almost two and a half now. And then we have a little seven month old baby. Um, I keep calling him little. He's, he's getting bigger. <laughs> um, it happens fast. And then yeah, it happens so fast. And then, yeah, I just, I stay at home with kids. I actually just started doing some homeschool preschool with my three oldest. So we're including that in our day now. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's been a fun adventure already. But other than that, you know, I don't have a ton of time for extra hobbies, but I love writing and I love um, just communicating biblical truth to women in any way I can in the margins of life. So that's probably my main hobby. I love it because I've, you know, I've seen a lot of um, your writing and I love the way you um, bring in the gospel and Mm -hmm. the way that you embrace little kids. (laughs) And um, (laughs) having done it, I, I can tell you that the season that you're in, and I'm sure you've, you've heard this, but I'll say it for the benefit of listeners too. The season you're in is the hardest season until your oldest one reaches about six or seven. It's just all on you. And so um, (laughs) it's just been really a great thing for me to watch you from the outside and see your joy in it and your purposefulness in embracing that. And that's Mm -hmm. actually why I wanted to invite you to to share with the listeners, because I, I know, you know, some people could say, oh, well, her oldest is, you know, three or four. And, um, but I have seen you really put your mind and your heart into it. And I think that's um, an attitude that really does make a difference in how you do with mothering. So I just wanted to, sh- I-, I wanted to share that at the front end so that people um, could hear your words with that in mind, that you really are someone who I see embracing that. Um, so 
I mean, I'm sure we, I, I actually saw your article recently about the comments you get of being out <laughs> with all of your young children. Um, yeah. But what are some lies or misconceptions that you think moms may believe about being mom to many young children, not just one or two, but having <laughs> kind of a heap of young children? What What do you think some of those things are? Yeah. Um, I had fun thinking about this question. And I think the first thing that comes to my mind always is I feel like there's this thought that, um, women with lots of young children have like super mom powers or like they must really love being pregnant and nursing and like being up all night with kids. (laughs) Like Uh they must love that. Um, or yeah, just like that we must somehow love, um, the chaos or feel equipped in a way that other women don't feel equipped. Yes. And that is, you know, I just, I guess I feel very normal, you know, um, (laughs) I have uncomfortable pregnancies and, you know, just like the, the next woman. And, um, I've had challenges nursing and I get really tired. And I think there's been a lot of moments with our young children where I just feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. And, Um, I think that's just a common feeling to all moms. (laughs) Um, and maybe the only difference is that my husband and I, I guess, are trying to take a longer term view and say that the future rewards of having these children, um, outweigh some of the challenges or discomforts that we have now. Mm. That's so good. Um, (laughs) I do think, you know, I mean, that's true in any difficult situation that we have to go through. Um, right now, the kids and I are building a, a um, pathway out in front of our house, a brick pathway. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've never done that before. I have no idea really what I'm doing. Um, but yesterday, you know, the, my big boys, they were saying, oh, this, this is hard. I'm tired. And I said, yeah, I'm tired too. But let's think about all the years of enjoyment we're going to have if we do this thing right. And let's think about not having weeds come up in the middle of it and having the bricks not crumble because we did a sloppy job making a poor foundation or whatever. So, but it's the same attitude in in all things that are hard. Um, Yeah. And and I remember um, a blog post you did a long time ago. It might've even been one of the first ones I read on your like blog that I came across. Uh Um, And you talked about when you were thinking about having a larger family or having more children, that there are a lot of different aspects in life where we are willing to endure hard things for the sake of reaching a goal or of having something that's ultimately good, whether it's, you know, somebody going to medical school or, um, you know, all of those examples. And I think, um, yeah, that's, that's how we're looking at it. I don't think, you know, parenthood is any easier for me than the next mom. Um, (laughs) so that's kind of a myth I see. And then the other one that came to my mind, um, my husband actually brought this one up and I was like, oh no, you're right. Um, (laughs) and that's just thinking that it's irresponsible to have a lot of little kids at Mm. the same same time. No one has probably ever said this to us, but I, I just kind of sometimes feel that there's this thought, oh, there's no way they can be giving their kids the love and the attention and the experiences they need. Um, I don't know. That's if you kind of heard that at all or. Oh yeah, for sure. Ever gotten that impression of this. And and sometimes I've thought it. I mean, I'll just be (laughs) honest, you know, like I've, I've thought that same thing. And I remember looking in on large families and think and wondering that, you know, how, how can (laughs) there be enough? Yes. Because there's this idea that in our culture, that what's good for children is just to give them as much undivided attention and experiences and possessions as as you can. So if you have one kid, they're getting a hundred percent of that. And if you have two kids, you're really giving them 50%. And then any more than that, um, they must be deprived. And that is not true at all. (laughs) Is there a little bit that you can expand on that thought for me? Because I do think, you know, I've written about that before too, but like share how that works in your home. How is it that you're, um, children aren't getting smaller and smaller slices of the pie, so to speak, 
Yeah. If you if you've now you know added a fourth rather than just being content with your your oldest son and your <laughs> twins or something. Yeah, I don't know. Like you said, just being honest. I think I I do still have those doubts or work through those questions, but I have seen God expand my capacity. I think and um, change some things about maybe the way I do homemaking or um, try to take other responsibilities off of my plate so they can have um, the group of them can have my full attention and just also trying to see opportunities to connect with them individually. So, um, you know, if they're playing with toys, you know, pulling one aside and, you know, tickling them or talking with them. I know you share those examples a lot. Um, And then just watching for like those, I guess, warning signs that a child isn't getting enough attention or they're not um, getting enough training or supervision, you know, you can see the behaviors start to happen. And often if I assess my um, attention with that child, I can say, honestly, okay, I haven't been um, present with them. I need to sit down and spend time or um, think about some of the issues that might be going on in their heart and how I can help them. So, I don't know. And and we've seen a lot of just great lessons that they're having to learn. I mean, they have to, our kids have to wait for things. Like I can't get to everybody right when they need me. And I think that's a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love what you said about expanding your capacity. And I think it's something we need to um, talk about more as moms, because we do that in every other setting. When, when somebody goes in as a, a beginning employee at yeah. Apple or at Avon or wherever yeah. somebody's working, the first year yeah. or two, they're going to struggle. But maybe within four or five years, maybe they're put in charge of a team. And then within Absolutely. 10 years, if they're still with the same company, they could be in management or they could be, they could be making their way up the ranks because their skills have enlarged. And, and like you say, they have enlarged capacity. And you can say, well, how could that person who couldn't even maybe manage their own sales calls or something. How could that person now be in charge of a whole team? And, and, and what you're saying applies in the same way that our skills expand. We, we get better at the smaller tasks that we used to do and we're more able to add in a little more and, um, yeah, God grows us. Um, I've seen that in my mothering too. Oh yeah, absolutely does. And I think that gives me hope when I, look ahead to the future and Lord willing, you know, we'll have more little ones and I can get kind of like, Oh, how am I going to do that? But (laughs) I just have to remember God has already been faithful to grow me (laughs) to where Mm -hmm. he's given me wisdom. Like we are doing it right now. And when that time comes, like I just have to trust he will grow my capacity again. That's great. Um, so that said, I'm sure there are things that, um, you have to specifically build into your life or do differently in order to embrace being a mom of little ones. I mean, you don't have any big ones. Like like this year, we just started um, for the first time, occasionally for short periods of time, leaving our two big boys in charge and going for a coffee date or something. But you're mm-hmm. still in that stage where you've got little ones. So how do you prioritize life in order to embrace where your family is right now? Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest things I've seen for for me and for our family that's a little different is I have to be home a lot. Um, and especially because our three oldest are in a very intense stage of life where they need a lot of training, (laughs) Um, a lot of discipline. That is not something that is easy to do when we are out in public or on the go. Now, you know, I feel like there's a foundation that needs to happen at home before, you know, I go out and then (laughs) get frustrated with them at the grocery store because, you know, they're doing something disobedient, but yes. So I just found, have found that I am, I have a lot of friends that stay at home with kids and they can oftentimes like go out and do a lot of different activities that, um, I'm just not able to do on my own, Mm -hmm. um, 
wisely. I may be technically good, but it's just not wise for me to take a three-year-old and two two two-year-olds and a baby to a park by myself, because if everything goes fine, it's fine. But, um, you know, they're just still at an unpredictable age. And so that is limiting. And I think I've just had to accept that and say, that is just where we are. And it's okay that I, my life looks different than other people's right now. And we are learning a lot of valuable things at home. And I hope that they are getting a lot of valuable training at home. Yes. That's so good because I'll tell you on this side of things that we see the trickle down effect happen with our kiddos Mm. and the things that we poured into the first two boys in particular when it was, and because at your stage, I still, let's see, I had, Ethan was three and a half and Baxter was one and a half. So, um, so I just had half of your number of children when you, when I had a three and a half year old, but, um, the things that I poured into them in those hard early years, when it feels like it's just constant, um, (laughs) I'm still reaping the benefits of, and I'm so thankful to have done that because I see the the things, even in in the next children, I see them look to their older brothers for how they should act, for how they should respond, for what's acceptable in our home. And it really does Mm -hmm. make a difference. So I, the, the, I love how you talked about stability and providing, you know, that, that foundation at home for then being able to, the times you do go out, um, yeah. not just expecting them to be kind of thrown to the wolves and, and behave <laughs> properly. Yeah. And what's funny is I've been in a couple situations where I feel like I went and did things before I gave them, you know, a foundation and yeah. it was really embarrassing and I really regretted it and thought, wow, we literally need more training on getting into the van and everybody getting strapped in and waiting for me patiently to get to them and, you know, mm. not going to push the van door button or not going to yeah. find their toy. And it's, those are things that for us, you know, maybe if somebody has, you know, one child you can kind of just muscle them into the car. Yeah. <laughs> but with my kids, like if they, you know, I have to train them systematically, get, get into the van, you need to go to your seat and then yeah. you're the first one to be strapped in. You're the third one. And that just takes time. And then, um, I was trying to think of some other things, uh, homemaking tasks is another huge area that my husband and I have had to be really strategic about, again, because our kids are at ages that need, you know, I mean, I'm having to sometimes intervene every one to two minutes, you know, in their play and get down and say, okay, no, we need to share that or (laughs) whatnot. So that's been really important. Okay. So how do you, um, with, with so many little ones, how does that, can you give us like a, a big picture view of how you've worked out your homemaking routines? Sure. Um, well, I think, uh, I've tried to, we've tried to look at the big areas of life, like laundry and meals and cleaning, I would say are kind of, those tasks are the biggest giants in my home. Okay. And in each of those areas, I think we've tried to say, how can we make this as simple as possible so that Um, you know, we can't ever eliminate it, but can we make it easier? Um, so for laundry, you know, I just try to do one load of laundry a day. (laughs) If I can just do that, switch it over. Um, my husband and I often on the weekends or in an evening, we'll fold all the laundry together. And that, that takes something off of my plate, you know, or that's something I don't have to worry about doing during the day. Yeah. Um, And then I'm trying to think for, for cleaning. Like one thing we've done is try to, I guess you could say just eliminate, um, unnecessary possessions that we own. And so that I'm not managing a bunch of stuff that's not important to our lives. Yes. Um, and just I, try and organize I saw your recent post on that. And I loved it. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to link to it in the show notes, but, um, I, I loved it because it's something that, Unless we're purposeful about, you know, Sally Clarkson says without, let's see, how does it go? Without purposeful, hmm, 
Oh man, I'm losing the quote. But basically, without purposeful choices, we will go the way of culture. And the way of our culture is to own a lot of stuff and to own a lot of decorations and to own, you know, to expand beyond what we actually need. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's just, I found myself like every time we have a thing in the room, it is eligible for a child to knock off of a shelf or break, or I have to clean it or worry about it. And certainly we want like things of beauty in our home, Yeah, but we're just kind of like, Hey, I have a lot on my plate just with like training them to be Lord willing, little godly men. And, um, I don't need to be worried about my vase that's like going to fall off and break on the floor. Um, and so, and that's maybe unique a little bit to our situation because we do have so many little kids in our house, but it's honestly something that has like allowed me to breathe a little bit easier because with less stuff, it's a lot faster for me to clean up. Mm. It is a lot faster. And my kids, yeah, we're, you know, we're working on including them in the cleanup process and I do expect them to help put stuff away, but reality is yeah. it's still mostly me. I mean, <laughs> at the ages they're at. And so I'm just making life hard for myself. If I have a lot of things out at their level that they can just dump out, you know, yeah. I have to go back and clean all that up later. So I've tried to really look at, you know, do I have a basket on the floor with like a bunch of blankets in it? Am I okay with those blankets being everywhere? And as long as I'm fine with that, then I leave it. But if I'm like, you know, I don't want to clean those up every day, we just try to remove those things. That's great. What sort of perspective shifts have you had to make in order to embrace this season in your life and not pine for, you know, the (laughs) the greener grass somewhere else? Yeah. Oh, I think it has been difficult. But again, I think Uh, my husband and I have really looked at what we believe the Bible has called us to do in this life. I think we have a shared vision for our family um, and just for our faith. And we just keep looking at this stage as an investment and um, important work. And so the work that we're doing right now is... um, it's going to reap rewards in the future. And I don't know. I am just trusting that. I feel like I don't even have a child over the age of five yet. And I am just trusting that God is going to be faithful. I don't know how they're going to turn out. He doesn't guarantee me that they're going to turn out a certain way, but right. we trust that this is still like really important work. Um, and we're not going to regret when we are 50 years old or 75 years old and we are at a family reunion and we see like all of what has come of what we've done in this life. Um, I don't know. I don't think we're going to regret this season um, of life. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Yeah, I'm going I, on absolutely. I think, I mean, it's like we talked about earlier, kind of getting our heads up out of this season is so hard. These yeah. children are so, <clears throat> you know, chaotic. This, this house is so messy. How am I ever going to, manage and instead to think, you know what, women have had messy houses for thousands of years. And yet at the end of their lives, inevitably what they're talking about is not their house, not their possessions, not the amount of money that they were able to make. They talk about relationships when they're on their deathbed. Relationships are what matter. And when we're in heaven, relationships are what we get to take with us. um, Yes. Lord willing. And so, so then... Yeah, getting our head up out of this season actually does in some ways enable us to embrace this season. So that's really good. Be sure to come back for episode six with Emily Jensen, where we continue our conversation. Thanks for listening to the Mom on Purpose podcast. For more information and all links and show notes, go to momonpurpose.com. You can make a huge difference in how many women find and benefit from this podcast. Please like Mom on Purpose on iTunes and take two minutes to leave a review. I'll meet you again next time to equip you to be a mom on purpose.